So, um, this is a part two of Core 5a uh, on QAP correlation. So we will see how QAP works and how it does it does um, it does function so as to have independent observation uh, in networks when it's not the case uh, at the origin. So recall that we want to examine the relationship between a G and G prime. We'll say that Gij, the adjacency matrix of G, is a dependent variable, and we will try to see if the adjacency G I G prime I J of network G prime uh, can be correlated uh, with uh, G G. So you remember that dependence between observation between the links of any network is problematic. So we will get rid of it by shuffling the adjacency matrix of the networks. This random shuffling will produce matrix that are really independent. It will remove the network effect of G prime, and at the same time, it will preserve the relation between the diads inside G prime. So the neighborhood are the same even in the shuffle matrix. But shuffling this matrix of G prime will remove any relationship between dependent variab variables, which is the adjacency matrix of G, and the independent variable, that is the adjacency matrix of G prime. So matrix shuffling is about permuting rows and columns in the same way. If you do that, the ties are preserved. Uh, you can shuffle the matrix in a very uh, in very different uh, ways, so you will produce a group, a list of permuted matrices that will produce a sampling distribution. And this sampling distribution corresponds to the null hypothesis distribution. In this case, the null hypothesis is the presence of a tie AB in G is not related to the presence of the link AB in G prime. So, we shuffle matrices to produce a null hypothesis distribution. Shuffling a matrix is quite simple, so let's say we have uh, this matrix and we want to shuffle the column 1, uh, we, will have to, we want to permute the column 1 to the column 3 and uh, row in the same way, so row 1 will become row 3. So basically we want to take that and put it here and take that and put it here. Here is a graphical uh, representation, so let's say that we, we make an empty column and an empty row. So you take the column and you put it here, and you take the row, and you put it here. You can remove the blank space, and we have a, mat a shuffled matrix where column 1 has been permuted with column 3, and row 1 has been permuted with row 3. Another example with the fourth column and the second column, and the fourth row and the second row, um, be careful that the label of columns that is no longer the column's position, so it's just a label, uh, 2, 3, 1, 4. And so if we want to take the column and put it here and the row and put it here, it will produce uh, this matrix. This matrix. Shuffling uh, conserves some properties of the adjacency matrix. You can first notice that uh, the diagonal terms uh, stay on diagonal. And the second property is that adjacency is preserved. So the neighbor, the neighbors of uh, a node in the matrix the original matrix, are the same in the permuted matrix. The only thing that change is the labeling of the columns. What used to be is column 2 is now column 1, for example. So, matrix shuffling keeps the same structural properties, so you don't, uh, you don't affect the density, the clicks, and so on of the graph. Uh, it may take a long time because a lot of row and columns imply a lot of possible permutations, so uh, to perform all of them will take some computation time. Uh, but it's important to spend this computation time because you will produce um, a, a, a well um, a rare fa fabricated uh, null hypothesis distribution, and you need this good uh, null hypothesis distribution for the stability of the p values uh, that we will get in the correlation test. And now that we have a permutated matrix distribution with no uh, uh, correlation, with no uh, dependence between the observed matrix G and the permuted matrix G prime and all of its variants that has been permuted, we can compare the correlation between G and G prime with the correlation between G and any matrix of the permuted matrix distribution. This is what we will see in the, in the third part of the course on crab correlation test. Thank you.